Hi everybody, welcome to Leon's Chainsaw Parts and Repair. I know it's been a little while since I put up a chainsaw related video. Just had a whole heck of a lot going on. Uh, last week at the coast, had that uh, farm all tractor that I was working on. That was actually fun once it was running. So, for starters today, we're going to look at the carburetor. I believe this is from an Olympic 251, and I just looked that up. It's right at, I think, 49 cc. So, uh, Wynn sent me this, and he's been having a lot of problems with the, uh, the vent system on that. So, it's similar to, oh, some of the Huskies, John's Red, a lot of those European saws even echoes I think uh, and of course they're they're Japanese I think they are anyway it doesn't matter uh, the vent system on those many times was a separate hose that ran up out of the tank and had a what almost looked like a fuel filter on it but it was a one-way valve so he's been fighting with that you can get the thing to run off and on but it'll die out like it's starving for fuel and he's already replaced all that venting stuff so he wanted to send me the carburetor and see what was going on now for starters here let me get this gauge reoriented so that you guys can see this is fresh out of the box so I'm trying to pump her up and something is just not right here because that's bleeding off just as fast as I can possibly yeah, that's we're going from 9 PSI to 0 in what felt like at most 8 to 10 seconds there. So, there is a problem in this carb. So, let's uh, get it apart and take a look. I'm going to go with my gut and say it's something over here on the needle side. So, we're going to start with that. This is a Tillotson HS, was it a 125? One. 128B. Now this is so similar to the Tillotson that's in the, uh, what is it, the XL130 and XL76 that use that HS125. About the the two biggest differences I can see is that the throttle shaft arm over here actually has a stud that's kind of riveted in place, and then there's no idle speed screw there. It was controlled some other way. So very minor differences. What I'm getting at is a standard Tillotson RK23HS is going to work in this, that kit. Now I know this has had a kit put in it. I'll be damned. I don't know. We'll go through the entire thing. But it didn't feel like this was indexed into the, the uh, inlet arm here. You guys see how there's kind of a fork right there and there is a the little nipple on the back here is kind of grooved to allow you to slip that in and it just I mean that came off awful easy and the inlet needle seems a little high or excuse me the arm but let's just see I know I indexed it that time nope she's still leaking past so we're gonna keep going here that, that is definitely a little high on that arm now adjustment wise all you're gonna do is bend this a little bit but only a little bit Okay, let's see if that cures our little problem here. Sometimes it really helps to do, you guys probably can't see, but I got out of my damn chair, my shop stool, and down at eyeball level with this thing, because it just makes getting some of this stuff in place so much easier. All right. Alright, that is somewhere around 10 PSI right there. Okay. 
ever so slight bleed off. And some of that could be a leak right around the the hose at the barb there because I of course use a couple pieces of hose fit together so it'll kind of halfway seal up. But that rate of leakage right there is not one that I would be concerned about. Not at all. That looks pretty good. So this should be a short repair. Take the pressure off because we know that's good. Now a lot of guys will go all the way through these carbs and punch out these Welch plugs. Unless you have a reason to believe that there is one that is, you know, got something under there, you don't need to punch it out. A uh, little trick you can use is take the corresponding needle out, plug it up here, and well away from your face, put the nozzle of your carburetor cleaner in here, and just shoot a little blast through, and see if it comes through into the throat of the carb. If it does, that's wide open, and those plugs don't need to come out. Now this plug looks like it has, and I can see just a little bit of gap right here. I mean, it looks like it's fitting tight, but I'm going to seat that plug just a little bit more. There's special tools you can use for this. Uh, a flat roll pin tool. Honestly, I found works just as well if you're careful about it. There we go. Okay. I know that's making a damn good seal right now. So we're going to take that out of the equation too. So anyway, on this side of the carburetor, I see absolutely nothing of any, any issue at this point. So we're going to put this back together. And we'll pop the other side off. Just to be completely thorough. I mean, if a guy takes the time to ship a carb to me, I want to make sure that I'm not sending him back something dumb that I overlooked. But over on that side, about all we're going to find, short of a, you know, just a tear in the gasket or something like that, would be if the uh, screen in the carburetor for some reason was plugged with gunk. But I don't expect that. Again, I know this carb's already been gone through. I think it was, I'll be honest, I think it was just that inlet lever was set just a little high there, and that was letting it leak by. And the carb cannot build proper pressure, because there is a small, you know, one or two PSI operating pressure that these things develop as the fuel shakes up in the tank and warms up. So, now that I've reseated that, we're going to check this one more time. make sure that nothing's magically changed and my eye says that's still rock solid so you guys will note sometimes I use this as opposed to the uh, the mighty vac 8500 it's just a little smaller easier to keep on the bench this was a home light tool originally but this full bulb it's like a blood pressure cuff bulb is starting to go bad so sooner or later I'm gonna have to replace that but the Mighty Vac 8500, a lot of people ask me about that. It'll do the same thing. I just uh, usually don't break it out unless I'm doing some crankcase testing or something like that. So, let's see what we got cooking on this side of this Tilly. Maybe not much. It'd be awful nice if this could slip back in the mail Monday and get back. Yeah, that's all fine. So one mistake I do see guys make every once in a while is uh, they'll get one of these apart and maybe not pay attention to, to how the gaskets came out or they'll tear or something like that. You always want to make sure on this this side of the carb that you get your your actual diaphragm on the flat block side. These two, these are basically check valves and they have to be able to operate against this fuel main block of the carburetor. They 
allow or don't allow fuel based on what whether there's a pulse from the engine or not. So your your gasket you want to have on top. And I just mix that up. Dummy. There we go. You want that on top. And you can see on the carburetor cover there's little ridges in here. That's what actually creates that sealing surface. So I don't see anything else wrong with this carburetor. It's holding pressure now. I know that the inlet lever was high. We saw that leak down initially when it came out of the box. So if there's still an issue with runnability, it's going to have to be in that, uh, in that venting system on the tank if she's starving for fuel. Uh, Wynn showed me a picture. They sent me a picture of the uh, little kind of and it's a triangular block in the top of the fuel tank and it's got three holes. I believe it's one's a primer line, maybe it's two, whatever. It's one of those blocks that has hoses coming through it. One of them is the fuel hose to the carb, one of them's that vent line at bare minimum. And sometimes those can be a pain in the neck. Uh, I suppose it's possible if that hose that the vent is on hasn't been replaced that it's collapsing but uh, it's tough to say. What I can say is that this carb is good to go, so when I'll get it packaged up and uh, back in the mail to you on Monday.